Hi, I'm Gracie of PV Robotics, and I'm going to show you how to program using a TensorFlow custom model in on block job in on bot Java. And if you do not have a custom model yet, if you look in the description below, there's a link to a previous video I made that walks you through the process. So the first step after you've downloaded your model is to go to your coding at code editor and click on the manage tab. And then if you scroll down, you'll see a space called upload TensorFlow Lite model file. So you'll select your model and open it. And then go over to, to the OnBot Java page and create a new program. We will name this Tensor, TensorFlow custom model. You can give it whatever name you want. We'll need to click on a sample. And there are three different TensorFlow object detections you can choose. This first one is going to use your built-in camera if you're using a phone. The second one will let you switch between two different cameras. And the third one is if you're using a webcam. I'll go with this one using a webcam. So then you'll create your program. And there's a few things that we need to change here. So the first thing is to change this default name of the file to the one that you've just recently uploaded. So change that, make sure it's spelled the same. And then you'll also need to change the labels to whatever labels you used in your data sets. My label was TSE, as you can see here. And I only had one, so I'm going to delete these last three and change it to TSE. Next, if you scroll down, you'll see this. Uh, you can either follow these directions given in the comments, or you can also just delete the inner text here. A little easier. Next, you'll scroll down and you'll see a line of code that sets zoom. This changes the field of view of your camera. So a higher, uh, this first value is the magnification and a higher magnification value will lead to a smaller field of view. So I'm going to change mine to one since I want the camera to be able to see as much of the squares as possible. And then the second number here is the aspect ratio. Most cameras do use a 16 to 9 ratio, but if yours is different, then you can change that here. Keep scrolling, and under here you can see that there is a confidence level listed way down here uh, in the initializing block, in the initialization function. Now the confidence level is how uh, sure the robot has to be that it's seeing an object before it declares it an object. So if you set this to a low value, then you'll have more false positives in which the robot believes that there is an object when there really isn't. But if you set it too high, then you'll have more false negatives in which the robot says there is no objects detected, but there really is an object there. So you'll need to find a happy medium. And this value, if your program's not working very well, this is one of the best values to change to see if you can get it to work better. Right. Another um, thing to double check is to make sure that your web camera name, if you're using a webcam, of course, is set to the proper name as said in your configuration file. And there is one other uh, line to change um, here it says to the it says load model from asset we're going to change this to load load model from file because now what it'll do is it'll load the custom model from where you uploaded it before it was going to load it from the hub with the pre-built one but we don't want that 
So that's all that you need to do to program this sample program. And as what this sample program actually does, I'll explain now. So in this loop block, the robot will be continuously updating this list of recognitions. And this recognition with a big R, this is uh, basically an object that the robot is detecting. So this list of recognitions will be continuously getting updated. And then if there is something in this list, if it is not empty, then the uh, objects, well, then it'll print the number of objects detected. And then for each of these objects, it'll print the label. So in my case, that would be TSE. And then the left and top values of the, and then the left and the top values of this boundary box drawn. And this will be in pixels, so it will be a, quite a large number in most cases. And then it'll also print the right and the bottom. And then it'll, and then this will loop through each of the objects detected in this list, and then it'll update and repeat it again. So you can change which variables are said here, and you can also use this same method in your autonomous program when you're ready to implement this. And then just to show you the different methods that you can call on a recognition. Here are your options. You have uh, get the bottom, and then left, top, and right, left, right, and top. And then you can also ask for the width of the image in pixels and the height. And those are the ones that you would be most likely to use. So just to recap, you have left, right, top, bottom, height, and width. So as a couple of possible ways that you can use this program in your autonomous setting, I can tell you what my team did. What we did is we had the robot set up during at the beginning of the autonomous period to see two of the three squares. Then we had it detect the uh Sorry, we had it detect for objects, and if there were no objects detected, then by process of elimination, the shipping element had to have been, had to have been placed in the third square, the one that was not in frame. If there was a shipping element detected, then, it, then we used the left side of the boundary box to tell if it was either in the first square or the second square. Of course, every robot is different, so experiment with your newly built program and see what happens.